it's not weird because she's actually a thousand year old dragon. Weabeard moves in. Welcome back. If you need a recap of the situation thus far, the first three posts are linked in one video. Conveniently packaged for your consumption, that is in the description. Warning, this post will make mention of a lot of bad situations. Turn back now if you're sensitive to uh, that sort of thing. This is going to be a long one, and for that, I apologize in advance. Weabeard and I had been dating for a few months at this time, online, of course, since he lived in the neighboring state. Over the course of these months, it had become apparent to me that Weabeard was not exactly happy in his current situation. His parents were insufferable, and he complained about them on an almost daily basis. They treat me like I'm still a child. I can't stand it here. And my dad is so verbally abusive. He's always on my butt about one thing or another. He had complained one day over a call. Weabeard was not lying about the abuse from his father, and I knew this because there had been several occasions where I'd had the pleasure of being on call with him when his dad would burst into the room and berate him over some small, mundane thing. A hair left in the shower, a glass on the kitchen counter, his shoes not put away neatly by the door, etc. I could tell that Weabeard's father ran a strict household, neat and tidy and prim and proper, at all times. He was a former army lieutenant, and it definitely showed. I did sympathize with Weabeard on his rather strict upbringing, as I myself had been what they referred to as a military brat. It does seem a bit overboard to me, but I don't know. You're 29, it's your dad's house, like, <laughs> get it together. You don't like it, then move out. And he does, with OP, as if that's going to, to change anything. The poison has been in Weabeard's heart this entire time. You can't run from something like that. Anyway, I won't delve too deeply into my own upbringing, but I was raised on base. My father was in the Marine Corps, stationed at Camp Pendleton for most of my childhood. He was a well-decorated sergeant that had served in Desert Storm. He had been in Somalia for the first three years of my life, spent some time as a drill instructor, the whole nine yards. He also ran a tight ship around the house, and boy, did he have a set of lungs on him when he was angry about something. War had hardened him. Despite all this, I never had the slightest impression that my father didn't love me. He doted on me as any good father should. Rest in peace, Dad. I love you. Ah, dang. I'm sorry he's gone, OP, but it does sound like he did right by you. Weabeard's father, however, seemed to treat him as if he were a disappointment. Like the sheer presence of him even being in his house disgusted him. I got the feeling that his father resented Weabeard for not turning out more like himself. A badass army lieutenant willing to give his life for his country. Weabeard was nothing like his father. He was softer spoken, shorter, a little pudgy, and extremely submissive. Anytime his father came around, I could see a physical change in Weabeard's demeanor. He looked like a puppy about to get spanked. I never witnessed his father ever actually hitting him, but Weabeard did flinch sometimes, and to me that's an indication that he may have been physically abused at some point as well. I never had the heart to ask. One day, as it were, Weabeard and I sat down for our nightly ritual of jumping on rabbit cast. I don't know if it's still around, but it's basically like a video streaming thing. And we were finding some anime to binge together or a movie to watch when Weabeard's father audibly slammed his door open so hard that it made even me jump through the voice call. He then proceeded to curse and belittle Weabeard to the point of literal tears and I had seen enough. Hey babe, you ever thought of like moving out, getting your own place? I asked after his father had stormed back out of the room. Weabeard did have a great job at the time. He was by no means a lazy person when it came to holding down that job. I felt like there was no reason he should have to put up with this kind of treatment. Yeah, I've thought about moving out before, but I wouldn't know where to begin. I don't even know how to get an apartment. I've never done that before. I mean, there's no time like the present. <laughs> it's not like this information is going to come to you in the middle of the night. If you want to find out, then be a big boy and, and go find out. 
I briefly explained the process to him, but it seemed to be out of his realm of understanding. No matter what advice I gave, he just didn't seem to grasp it, or maybe he was just too apprehensive to take a step like that. I don't really know. I definitely lean towards the apprehension thing. If he really wanted to do it, he would have done it by now, right? Eventually, I caved. Well, why don't you just come live with me? I asked. Dun, dun, dun. The moment I said this, Weabeard's eyes lit up like a kid's on Christmas Day. Uh, are you serious? Really? You'd let me move in with you? I nodded at him. Well, normally I'd say moving in together after just a few months is moving way too fast, but I don't think it's healthy for you to be there with your dad the way he is, you know? Besides, you can just stay with me until you get on your own feed, and then I can help you get your own place somewhere nearby. Oh, hope floats, does it not? <laughs> Wea Beard was absolutely ecstatic. He exuberantly promised me that if I really did let him move in with me, he'd get a new job straight away, and we could split the rent and the bills, etc. It all sounded great to me, as I was your typical starving artist. I had a job, mind you, but my job was one of those where they cut people's hours down to like 35 a week and strictly enforce no overtime. The money from the art that I did for the virtual community that We Beard and I interacted on was really my saving grace at this point in time. This is just like the perfect storm of unfortunate situations, is it not? And so the plan was set into motion. I would meet We Beard in real life for the first time and immediately allow him to move in with me. We saw this in Mudbeard too. It ain't gonna go well, as if I didn't already know. The next few weeks seemed to fly by, with us chatting excitedly about our newly made plans and all the things that we could do, like turning my spare bedroom into a gaming slash entertainment room, or going out to eat together, watching movies in person, and Weabeard's favorite thing to bring up, finally getting to be intimate with me in real life. Uh. <laughs> As previously stated, I was indifferent to physical affection in general. I'm neutral asexual, as stated before. To stress this again, yes, he knew that about me. I had already had the conversation with him about my sexuality long before this. I wasn't hiding it from him by any means. That was the last thing on my list of things to be stoked about, and he damn well knew that. Yeah, but he doesn't care about how you feel about it. It's all about him. He's just the worst, man. I don't even know how it made it this far. Still. <laughs> well, the closer and closer it got to moving day, Weabeard would push the topic more and more. It seemed to be all that he was focused on. I would bring up a game that we could play together, and he'd be like, Yeah, and then afterward we could have some naughty time. <laughs> I would talk about cooking him my version of chicken gnocchi soup for him to try. Oh, I can't wait to see you look at all this cooking in the kitchen, and I might sneak up behind you. <laughs> yeah, I get it, okay? You're a coom brain degenerate. Can you, can you just hold a normal conversation for like 30 seconds? Jesus. I brought up that... I'd want to be cautious in telling my parents about our relationship at first. Yeah, they don't need to know all the dirty things I'm doing to their little girl. <laughs> it was really starting to creep me the hell out. It's never too late to nope out. Just be like, look, I thought about it. I don't think it's a great idea after all, okay? So finally, OP straight out asks Weabeard, are you a virgin or something? after he had made another offhand comment. Like, seriously, this dude acted so down bad that it gave me major V-card vibes. <laughs> of course not. I, I've been with guys and girls. I don't discriminate, and I'm definitely not one of those. <laughs> I haven't been one for a super long time. Yeah, that's super believable. <laughs> <laughs> he defended himself adamantly. He seemed genuinely offended that I would even suggest it. Well, 
Can you please tone it down with the dirty talk? It is starting to get like really annoying. I huffed at him. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. I I'll stop. I'm just so excited to get to uh, touch you in person. Uh, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever been with. He said dejectedly, and I sighed at this. Now, please don't take me for some ungrateful ice queen. It's not that I don't enjoy compliments about my appearance on occasion, but our whole relationship seemed to have this constant dynamic of him always putting himself down and putting me up on a pedestal. He acted like I was some sort of infallible goddess that had graced him with the unbelievable gift of being in my presence. I mean, at least he knows that he's not worthy. <laughs> he needs to work on himself a whole heck of a lot more before this is ever gonna work. But if he did all that and it worked out, then I guess we wouldn't be reading the story. So uh, I guess we could be grateful even for the things that seem completely terrible. <laughs> this kind of thing makes me really uncomfortable. Mainly because I don't see myself that way, and I never have. I'm still working internally over the course of many years to overcome my extremely low self-esteem and the discomfort for any kind of sexual attention that's aimed my way. I will now share with you all something that I have kept inside of me for a very long time. This is the part where those that are sensitive to abuse should probably stop reading or listening. So when I was a child, about eight years old to maybe 12, I was abused by my mother's dad. I refused to call that monster my grandfather because he took everything from me. Jesus, Jesus, dude. I'm so sorry that happened to you, OP. Honestly, I hope that life in turn took everything from him. I mean, I guess you did warn us, but that, that was heavier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm ready to put him up against the wall. You just give me an address, all right? <sighs> I sometimes wonder if I might have turned out to be a different person had it not been for his actions. Would I be more self-confident, more outgoing? Would I not struggle with social anxiety and panic attacks? Would I have been more successful in life in general? My whole life after this has been a struggle for me. Always second-guessing my decisions, always too scared to take the leap, Take a good opportunity, put myself out there and make something of myself. It's like I have this dirty secret about myself that makes me unworthy of that kind of praise and attention and it has ruined my life. <sighs> These are the sorts of things that should be unpacked with a, with a therapist. I don't have the answers regarding this, I'm afraid. I've never had anything like that happen to me, thank God, but I still have social anxiety and panic attacks, so I don't know, maybe you can take some solace in that. Lordy. Furthermore, I had just gotten out of a divorce in which I had found my ex-husband cybering with other women online, and when confronted about it, he told me that he had loved me, but he had fallen out of love with me a long time ago. He told me that I didn't give him enough physical attention, and he had nowhere else to turn but to other women online. How about you, like, open up to the person that you're in a relationship with, you dope? <laughs> also, I think the cybering thing is really funny. We're, we're really old, aren't we? <laughs> Nowadays, it's just like, here's a sausage selfie. But back in the day, all we had was words. A picture would take three minutes to download. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, uh, so yeah, he said it was my fault that he had to end up cheating on me. He was not even the first person to cheat on me at this point either. I'd been in many relationships, as you can imagine. Being asexual makes it hard for me to find suitable partners. Yeah, and a lot of people just lie, you know? They think it'll all be fixed once they've got the job, and that's just never the case. Be honest about your intentions. It's not that hard. There's a lot of people that care way too much about that one particular aspect of a relationship, at least in my opinion. Of the four people that I had been with before we appeared, I had been cheated on by every single one. Not only cheated on, but abused. And when you think little of yourself, it's easy to fall victim to people you, in your own head, think that you deserve. 
Yeah, sort of like that self-punishment that we saw in the Unfortunate Nookie Saga, no? So, you think, like, you can't do any better than this. Like, this is your only option. I've been hit, I've been choked, had my jaw broken, and the very worst of it all, one of my exes attacked me with a box knife. We were arguing about a male coworker of mine giving me a ride home from work one day, which was a mortal sin in his eyes. God, that is like the insecurest of the insecure. I wasn't allowed to interact with males around him or even look at them without him beating the living crap out of me. At some point, I dared to tell him to go screw and turn to walk away into the bedroom. He came up behind me, yanked a handful of my hair, threw me down on the bed and proceeded to punch, I thought, at me, wildly, cursing at me, flinging the nastiest insults. He was actually lacerating my legs as I lay tucked in the fetal position. One of the cuts severed my right calf all the way to the bone. What, dude, what? This is absolute insanity. I know you've heard it many times before, OP, but hopefully you can believe it a little bit more coming from me. I, I know you probably watched a bunch of videos, right? We're, we're basically parasocial friends at this point. You don't deserve any of that, all right? You are better than all of this. I, I know you've moved onwards and upwards from, from watching in the Discord a bit, but the fact that you had to go through it at all, it's just... <sighs> life is so unfair, man. So then, the coward fled the house and left me there to bleed to death. Or so he thought. I only realized that he had been cutting me, not punching me, when I tried to slide off the bed and stand, only to drop like a rock when my legs wouldn't support me. I had to literally drag myself across the house, tie a towel around my legs, and call an ambulance. You are such a fighter. I, I hope you put him through hell for this. There is no amount of revenge that would be too much at this point. Pure adrenaline, I think, was the only thing that kept me from passing out at this time, and really, it's all kind of a blur to me now. Seemed like it happened so fast. The paramedics told me that I had lost a lot of blood, and that I was extremely lucky I had wrapped the towel as tightly as I had. I was in a wheelchair for two weeks, a walker for one week, and finally crutches as I went through physical therapy to relearn how to use my newly attached muscles and tendons. I am shocked, man. I don't even have the words for this. The bottom dropped out. We we have just lost cabin pressure. It is going to come back around at some point. Might just take us a while to get there. The scars I have left on my body from this attack are a constant reminder to myself that if pushed to my absolute limit, I do have it in me to fight through it. That's what I'm saying, at least. I am using this learned courage to share my story with you all here today. I know this was a lot, and it might seem irrelevant to the We A Beard story specifically, but I promise you, it will put a lot more stuff that happens later into perspective for you, knowing all of this. Uh, that's enough about me for now, enough doom and gloom, uh, I guess we're moving on. I mean, you might move on, I I'm gonna need a few minutes to process all this. <sighs> we A Beard knew about all of this, the things that I had been through were one of the things that I had shared with him as we talked about our pasts and our lives in general over those first few weeks of getting to know each other. He had told me in turn about his father's mental and verbal assaults and that he had been with a girl through high school that had cheated on him and how he was scarred by this, etc. I suppose I saw him as a poor, lost, broken soul, much like myself, one that I could protect and help to heal his wounds. Bro, he has taken advantage of you full stop. My daddy yells at me and a girlfriend in high school cheated on me. Welcome to the human experience, like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have a lot of sympathy for this dude, if any. So when I blatantly overlooked all of these initial flaws and red flags of his, please understand that it wasn't out of pure ignorance. It was more out of blind faith that he truly was just a broken thing in need of fixing, and that I had similar experiences in life, so perhaps we could fix each other. He seemed like the perfect fit for me at the time. He was so gentle and kind and sweet, always complimenting me and seeing me as some sort of savior. 
See, what he's doing here is, is playing into your savior complex. He's sitting there going, hey, you can save me. Only you can save me. Are you going to save me? And you can't say no because you're a good person. He's not kind or sweet. He lied to you. He continues to lie to you. Man, I, I hope this story ends with some fireworks for real. <laughs> so yes, he was a far cry from the guys I'd been with before. So all of his gross outbursts and his fixation on how amazing it was to be with a beautiful girl sort of got swept under the rug on my part. Finally, it was moving day. He would be making the four hour drive to my state and we would be meeting in person. And I would help him unpack all his stuff when he got to my place. They say you never really truly know someone until you've lived with them and I wholeheartedly agree on that opinion. And this was most definitely the case with Weabeard. Let's just say that of all the things he told me about himself, right down to his interests in things, it all began to unravel and unfold before my very eyes. I wish I could say I was shocked. <laughs> you can't keep up lies forever. But I'm gonna end this here for the moment because I need a minute. Thanks again for reading and sorry for all the triggery stuff. As always, I hope you have a great day slash night and I will catch you next time. Well, this definitely got heavier a lot quicker than I expected and yet it is a lot of backstory that I can apply to your actions and behaviors, but I don't wanna leave the video off on just that. So we'll go ahead and, and stick one more in here and I guess we'll see how that goes. We a beard. It's not weird because she's a thousand years old. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to my saga. This post is going to contain uncomfortable elements. I'm warning you right now. In fact, this whole saga is just one big ball of uncomfortable. I mean, we got through Unfortunate Nookie. We'll get through this one. It's going to be fine. Anyway, I'll have to take a second here and thank everyone that commented on my last posts. You're all so sweet and... I appreciate you taking the time out of your days to comfort me and offer kind words. I was not expecting this amount of kindness from the community because of the warnings from friends of mine about toxic people on here, which does happen. <laughs> Make no mistake, there is some toxicity on Reddit, but I don't find that the, the Neckbeard Stories community is generally part of that. One or two bad eggs, mostly supportive. Thank you all for joining me again in this next step in my life towards healing and moving on. Red X, thank you for your sound advice and giving me the encouragement to keep going. I got you, fam. Alex, thank you for reaching out to me privately. You have no idea how eternally grateful I was and will be forever that you made me feel less down on myself. You're both beautiful souls, and I wish you guys the best life. Honestly, I think I'm living the best life. This is the job that I've always wanted to do, and people like you writing quality stories makes this possible. So I'm going to go ahead and thank you right back and wish the same thing for you, OP. The day had finally come. Oh no. <laughs> we a beard showed up in my parking lot in a bright red Chevy truck with a small U-Haul in tow. He stood about four inches taller than me, about five foot seven, with his flaming red unkempt hair and his plain white v-neck, his slightly crooked, thin-lipped smile surrounded by a thick, unruly red beard and a pair of bronze wireframe glasses. I tried to push it out of my mind that he had one of those faces now that I was seeing him in the flesh. I don't really know how else to describe it, but he looked kind of like a kitty fiddler. Oh, that's not good, and I do kind of know what you're talking about. A semi-smile that doesn't quite reach up to those cold, vacant, vacuous eyes. Generally, I just say coom brains because it applies to a lot more things, but he might be. I, I guess it remains to be seen. I don't know if any of you will get what I mean when I say this. I do. Just something about the look of him and the mannerisms of this person gave me those creepy vibes. Maybe because my mother's dad had been a redhead as well. I'm not really sure. Oh, Jesus, the plot thickens. In any case, something inside of me was just screaming at me to run inside and lock my door. I couldn't do that. Not after he'd driven four hours to get here, and I had been the one to extend the invitation. Nah, dude. <laughs> invitation revoked. Drive four hours back. Get the hell out of here. It's fine. 
Break the social contract. It's not going to do anything but hold you back. You come here, he said in a sing-songy voice, opening up his arms and lowering his head dramatically. The way he said it was like predatory. Yeah, sing-songy, like you'd say to a child. The pieces are all starting to fall into place. I awkwardly plastered a smile onto my face and walked into his embrace, patting him slightly on the back as he bear-hugged the absolute crap out of me. I am not big on touching. I don't like hugs that last for too long either. They make me feel claustrophobic. It's no surprise that when he held me so tightly for what seemed like, I don't know, a freaking hour, all the while huffing my hair, I started to get a bit uncomfortable in his arms. Ew, dude, ew, dude, ew, dude. Biggest creep vibes, dude. Oh, say something. Please say something. But I don't think she'll say anything because uh, of, of past abuse. It's all that mindset of like, yeah, I hate this, but I guess it could be worse. Ah, so unfortunate. Then I felt his hands slowly trying to make their way down my backside. Oh, I pushed away from him a bit forcefully, keeping an awkward grin pasted on my face. I could feel my cheeks burning. I didn't want to hurt his feelings, but I was not okay with him touching my butt just yet. Let's, um, let's get your stuff brought in so we can drop the U-Haul off in a little while, I suggested. He thankfully agreed, and we spent the next hour or so just bringing in all his crap. A while later, we dropped the U-Haul off and then came back to the apartment to start unpacking his things. Nothing eventful really happened at this point, other than me catching him occasionally staring at me with a grin on his face, or his comments about how I was smaller and looked younger than he thought I would in person. That is not normal. <laughs> you don't think that's eventful? I think that speaks volumes. Disgusting! But OP says, okay, it was all pretty normal. Until I happened upon a small box, taped shut with duct tape, instead of being folded closed like all the rest. I began peeling the tape off, and he suddenly whipped his head around and charged towards me, making a grab for the box. Hey, give it here, he said frantically. I giggled mischievously and held it out of his grasp. What's in here? All your hentai books, <laughs> I teased. Please, just give it to me, mute, he said sternly, without any hint of humor in his voice. The light-hearted mood I was in dropped immediately and I was staring at him with probably the most incredulous look on my face. What's in it? I pressed again in a flat tone, finally handing it off to him. <laughs> it's just my trophies! Ew, what? No. <laughs> Get me out of here! Weabeard had trouble looking me in the eye at this moment, which only made my curiosity all the more persistent. I'm the worst kind of person when it comes to keeping a secret from me. You... Can't! <laughs> it's just like my wife, too. It's not my finest trait, but if you are hiding something from me, I will find out what it is. No surprise birthday parties for me. I'll spoil them immediately. I know this is an annoying as hell part of my personality, but I really just don't like not being in the know about stuff that directly affects me. I mean, it's fair. I'm taking bets for what's in the box. I think it's a bunch of missing girls driver's licenses. <laughs> Whatever Weabeard was hiding in that box, to me, just seemed like the potential for him to have lied about some other part of himself that he desperately didn't want me finding out about. So naturally, for the next few hours, as we unpacked the rest of his belongings, I pestered him about it. Dirty magazines? No. Nasty DVDs? No. Uh, explicit pictures of your ex. No mute. Someone's ashes? No. Uh, fine, here. Open it. Weabeard tossed the box back to me, and I caught it, grinning and very pleased with myself. I'm such an a-hole, I know, but it was killing me, not knowing. Honestly, to this day, it was the only time that I actually deeply regretted my pushiness. Oh, no. I peeled the tape the rest of the way off the box and folded it open, 
Inside was a folded up piece of construction paper, a Ziploc bag with something in it, a bunched up piece of pink fabric, a photo of a girl, some jewelry that looked like it came from Hot Topic, and a small, plushy cat. Weabeard shifted uncomfortably as I started to pull out each item and examine them. The paper was just a note from who I assumed was the girl in the photo. I didn't read it, just set it aside and moved on. Plushy cat, bracelet, photo. I pulled the pink fabric out and was horrified to find that it was a pair of girls' panties with stains on them. And not the kind of stains that a female would leave. <laughs> Ew! Weabeard! I practically screamed, tossing them aside, and then I lifted the Ziploc bag. Inside was a very clearly used prophylactic. I almost threw up. Why are you keeping all this stuff? I shot at him. How long have you had this? Weabeard couldn't meet my eyes, unsurprisingly. That girl that I dated as a freshman, the one that cheated on me, it was back when I was dating her, he mumbled at me. Fourteen years. He had been hanging on to this stuff for fourteen years. That in itself was entirely disturbing to me, but not as disturbing as when I finally had the realization that he was still using the panties and the picture of that girl. He was 29 years old. So for the math magicians, 14 years ago, this girl would have been 15. Oh my God, dude, just when you think it can't get any worse. What? What? Uh, all right, pack all your stuff up in the boxes. You gotta get the hell out of here. I got up, promptly ran to the bathroom and scrubbed my hands raw. I cannot tell you the sheer cacophony of emotions that was playing through me at this moment in time. Weabeard slowly inched his way into the bathroom and stood behind me with a look on his face of pure panic. I'm sorry, you're not mad at me, are you? He said in an almost pleading voice. You are throwing all of that away now! That's disgusting, we appeared. Freaking gross! Y you realize how all of this looks, right? I knew that I was being harsh in the way that I was speaking to him, but I didn't care. What the hell did he expect? I can't even believe you brought that crap into my apartment! I continued, making a beeline back to the room and hastily grabbing up all the stuff between two fingers and practically throwing it at him. Trash! Now! I ordered. <laughs> I think this is the proper reaction. I don't think it's gonna fix anything. His dad's been yelling at him for years. But you never know if you don't try. <laughs> he hopped into action and disappeared into the kitchen where I kept my trash can. And he came back to the room empty handed and looking guilty as all hell. He didn't throw it away. He hid it somewhere, I guarantee. Uh, I'm really sorry, mute. He repeated under his breath. Later, he had argued that I had completely overreacted to this whole situation, and that it wasn't uncommon for guys to hang on to mementos from past relationships. Was I justified? Was I wrong? I don't know. At the time, though, it felt like something really wrong to me. It felt super wrong that he was still pleasuring himself to a photo of his 15-year-old ex and using her panties to clean up. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> Uh, you were justified. This is not wrong. I've never kept a memento from past relationships. Once it's over, it's over. The reason this guy is incapable of moving on and finding somebody else 15 years later is because he's been hanging on to Pandora's box this whole time. Oh, God. A few weeks later, things had calmed down considerably. Thank God. <laughs> no more nasty surprises awaited me other than the absolutely cringe way that Weabeard would overact out the stuff that he was talking or doing. I don't mean like overreacting, I mean straight up acting. Like he was in a play or something, and he was an actor trying to land that big role. I would make food and he'd take a bite and throw his head back and moan, and rub his stomach dramatically. 
<laughs> or I would get out of the shower wrapped in a towel and he would do this clutching at his heart and pretending to stumble or pointing at me and shaking his finger while shaking his head in that oh you gesture except he wasn't joking or doing it ironically. He's media poisoned. He's media poisoned and coom brain that we need this to stop. <laughs> I eventually had to tell him to please stop acting that way because it was embarrassing me. I felt embarrassed on his behalf. There was also one other small thing. Weirbeard had the worst breath. Like something had crawled in there and died. Yeah, like the roots of his teeth. <laughs> it was chronic. Not really his fault, but oh my god, his breath could melt the balls off a brass monkey. <laughs> you can smell it from six feet away. I think he might have had tonsil stones or something. He brushed, flossed, used medicated mouthwash. Nothing ever helped, so I was extremely hesitant to ever kiss him. You can't brush and floss away a root canal. That tooth is rotting and everybody can smell it. <laughs> Just go to the dentist, please. Weirbeard still had issues understanding my asexuality though. Whether it was that he just didn't understand it or didn't care, I will never know. I mean, probably both, but mostly didn't care. He constantly made advances on me at all times. It was so bad that I couldn't even sit next to him without my arm accidentally brushing up against him and him getting visibly aroused. Ew, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating here. I am dead honest to God, serious. He would get a bone bone on just from me touching him anywhere on his body or even from just hugging him. He wasn't subtle about it either. He would try to dry hump me constantly or touch me inappropriately in public so much that I would have to yell, STOP IT, to finally get him to cut the crap. I still, to this day, think he was some kind of addict. It was like an illness, a relentless illness that he constantly forced on me day and night, week after week, month after month. I started to genuinely worry about the depths of this addiction when he asked me one day if I would be willing to do a little role play in the bedroom to spice things up. I gave him the benefit of the doubt at this moment and said, okay, I've never done that before, so what did you want to do? I asked. Uh, well, don't freak out. Promise me you won't freak out, he started. Bro, you can't promise that. <laughs> you tell me what it is, and then I'll have the reaction that I have. But OP rolled her eyes at him at this point and said, I'm not gonna freak out. Now tell me, I demanded. I kind of want you to, like, pretend you're innocent and don't understand what banging is. And you don't really understand what's happening while we do it, he revealed. Yeah. <sighs> that. Oh my god, dude, it hurts me so deep down in my soul. I already know what the big reveal of the story is gonna be. There's really no doubt about it at this point. He's a kitty fiddler. If not in real life, only because the opportunity hasn't presented itself. I hate this guy, and I would love to see him dead. You could have the fantasies that you have, but this seems like a bridge too far. And of course, that was a big hell no from OP, and I told him this. That hit way too close to home for me, and I was way too uncomfortable playing into this little sick fantasy of his. We a beard was one of those weeaboos, I later found out, that likes to argue that it's not weird because she's literally 10,000 years old. She's just trapped in a kid's body. The more and more I learned about him, the less and less I wanted him even touching me. It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Start the eviction process right now. If you don't have the stomach to get him out of your house by yourself, then make Johnny Law come and do it. This is, this is, it's not gonna go well. The situation is only going to devolve, and it's already so devolved that I don't know what happens. We all turn into protozoa. Oh! So yes, I began to distance myself from Wea Beard a lot. I would drown him out and just escape onto the virtual client and do my art commissions or chat with my friends on there. 
watch a movie on my laptop, read a book, get out a pen and paper and just start sketching. You've, you've slowly transformed into a prisoner in your own house. You realize this, right? I would do anything but spend time with him. It wasn't lost on him either that I was growing distant with him. He began to start sighing loudly and moping whenever he saw me starting to log in to the virtual client. This is my job. This is how I make my money. You shut your goddamn mouth. When I would ask him what was wrong, he would deny that anything was wrong. And then I was just imagining him being mopey and acting upset. This is severe suspended adolescence. You realize that? He's acting like a like a 13 or 14 year old. You haven't been 14 for a decade and a half. It's time to get it to hell together. Weabeard said, I always act like this. I don't see what you're talking about. I'm just sitting here normal, he would say. His gaslighting only got worse and worse by the end of our first year together. A year? Bro, <laughs> what? Uh... And it evolved into straight up denying anything I said or pointed out to him to be true. He started to make me feel like I was going crazy, imagining things, like maybe I was the one with the issue. He used this against me a lot, but the worst of it is yet to come. That'll be a story for the next post and video, I'm afraid. I'm starting to get pretty tired. I work tonight and it is 3.20 in the morning as I'm typing this. Take care everyone and thank you again for all your love and support. Mute. How can you possibly be this tolerant? <laughs> uh, uh, I think OP has more tolerance in her little finger than I have in my entire body. I couldn't do this. There's about 26 different points where I would have spurned him. Oh, you lied to me about what you look like. Go away. You, 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 you give me creep vibes. Go away. You got a box full of mementos about a high school girl. Go away. He's the worst. He is the worst, and I, I really do fear that it's going to get terrible. But we will continue to plumb the depths. The, the, the cringe is what the audience came for, and you know, it's really delivered today. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. Can we scoop some of that back in the pan? Jesus Christ. Whew. <laughs> I hope you guys will like, comment, and or subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on all the things. Hey, thanks. Share the video around. Thank you to my Patreon members and channel members. You guys are amazing. I will read you out tomorrow. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye. Uh,